Hey guys, welcome back to Anna with Plants. My name is Anastasia. Today we're doing an Anthurium repot. So I'm just popping back on here to film the intro and the outro. Let's just get into it. All right, hey everyone. So time to repot. Um, if y'all are wondering, this is actually a garbage bag that I just put down to protect my wood table. I have been meaning to purchase like a cute little potty mat. Just never got around to it, so it is what it is right now. These are the three plants right here, all anthuriums that I want to either repot or check out the roots because they're not doing so hot. We have this one here, which just pushed out a new leaf right here. This is an anthurium silver blush crossed with a red crystal from Car Carnivira. Carnivira. I don't know, the leaves, old, the older leaves are doing this really weird thing here. It just might look like it's time for a repot. Uh, I can see some roots and also the algae is getting kind of gross. Just wanted to see if maybe this one's due for an upsize. Next guy on the roster is this Forgetii Silver crossed with an Endo Hoffmanii. This one I got not too long ago. I potted it in a pure tree fern with some pumice added to it. And unlike all the other anthurium that I got with this order, this guy is just not looking great. He's very floppy. This was supposed to be the new, newest leaf, and it, as you can see, it's just flopping over. The leaves feel very flimsy, like they're not getting water. I just need to get him out of this and just see if it's root rot. <sighs> I suspect that this is probably root rot. The last dude is this one. I got it from a seller called We Love Plants um, online, and it was marketed to me as a Anthurium Michelle, one of the dog block um, hybrids. However, I, I don't know, this emergent, if I remember, I'll pop in a photo of what it looked like, it just didn't look like normal Michelle emergence, so I'm not sure if a Michelle is capable of having different color emergence, if that's part of the normal variation or whatnot. This guy had root rot when I first got it, so it's been rehabbing in here for a while. It has grown roots into here, um, it's pretty well rooted. As you can see, the older leaves don't really look that great, and I attribute it to the root rot that happened. I just noticed that the algae in here is just really, really bad. I just want to get it out into a newer substrate and hopefully help that out. Honestly, I think we should just start off with this guy. This is the one that worries me the most. I think whatever I find in here is not going to be... It's not going to be great. I'm just going to move these guys off to the side and we'll deal with him first. If this has root rot, this is going to be my first anthurium that I have put into tree fern that has rotted. Because the substrate has been doing well for me for everything else. One thing, as you can see, that I love about tree fern is it just falls away from the roots. It's so easy to clean off the roots when it's in tree fern fiber. Like moss, which just sticks to, to them, and even if you try your best to get it off, it just it's not happening. Tree fern fiber, try it out if you haven't. Yeah, they're not feeling great. This one feels okay. Oh, yeah, you can see the root rot there happening. It's not the worst I've seen. It's not like it turned black or anything. See that guy right here? Ready to fall off. In preparation for this, I have brought a little bowl of a couple splashes of hyd uh, hydrogen peroxide and um, some Castile soap in there just for good measure. So I'm just gonna wash this guy in here. And look at that magic. All of the roots are cleaned off. Tree fern fiber on there. That is, well, again, one of the beauties of it. So I'm just gonna kind of dump the leaves just as a prevention measure since Castile soap can take care of any pests that might be on the plant too. Just give them a quick dunk. Some of the roots feel really good though. I might just cut off the ones that aren't doing well. I got my pruning shears here. I'm just gonna cut off the parts that have rotted or just look like they're gonna rot or I did cut off a good chunk of the root system, and then these are all the 
not so healthy rotting roots here. So this is the Silver Blush Red Crystal. This guy has been in this mixture of mainly pumice with some microlica in there. Got a lot of algae on the bottom. It's just thinking it's time to upot it since all of the other seedlings I got around this time have been upotted already. And right now it's not really pushing a new leaf. If there's a time, it's right now. Ugh, look at all that algae sliminess. Okay. The roots look way better here. They got a little bit of rotty roots. I think these were some of the initial roots that came with this plant when I received it. It's grown so many new roots in this, so it looks pretty good. I honestly don't want to disturb it too, too much because I'm gonna repot it probably into a pond mix and I don't really see a purpose to disturb the plant if it's doing okay. So it is definitely time. It's grown into the shape of its container and one thing about anthurium seedlings is that they want more space to grow and if you give it to them they will reward you with bigger leaves. Last guy is the Michelle question mark. I think I'm just going to use the same container that I did with the last one and then I'll just have to sterilize all this um, tree fern, which is fine because I kind of want to kill the algae anyway before I, I reuse it. Before the algae totally overtook this container, I saw some really good root growth, which was a miracle because this guy originally came to me in soil in like a huge pot. The roots were rotted, so I had to cut a lot of it back and then I tried it to um, rehab it in, I think it was like a micro leca situation and I just noticed the leaves were getting worse. So then I unpotted it and then I saw that the roots continued to rot. So I basically had to chop them all back to nothing almost. And then I tried to water prop it uh, cause the leaves were just looking dehydrated, but that wasn't really doing much. Around this time, this was when I bought my first bag of tree ferns. So I decided to pot it into here and it, this was the only substrate that actually rehabbed it. The tree fern itself is fine. I think just all the algae was stuck to the outside. It's nice to see these new roots that it grew though. As you can see, rotty roots were in the middle. And then you can see all the healthy roots that it grew in the tree fern, but definitely not time to a pot it. It's fine in the container, in the size of container that it, it, it was before. So I'll just clean out the container and put this guy back into it. I'm not even gonna clean off the tree fern, it's gonna go straight back into tree fern, so give me one sec to get all the appropriate pots that we need and then I'll be right back. All right, everything is washed. I got all of the new containers that I'm gonna repot these plants into. So links will be in, in the description for what containers I'm using, but as you can see, it's all going to be um, passive hydro with a cotton cord. So this is gonna be for the Michelle. This pot is gonna be for this guy over here. And my thinking behind this is so this net pot has some um, airflow, which I think might help with its tendency to rot. I don't know, and I think I'm gonna change the substrate to my chunky pond to increase that aeration and see if maybe that won't help it root out better. And then last one, this is the only true upsize for the day. I have this Sear Deli container. This is a 24 ounce and oh my God, when I found these on Amazon, I was so excited. <laughs> and then this is when you know you're weird is when you get very excited over clear deli cups. They, the, but the site uh, that I found, I think it's called Golden Apple or something, has this in a 24 ounce and a 32 ounce. 32 ounce fits some of my containers perfectly that I've been trying to find like a cover pot or a cash pot for. So, so, so excited when it fits. This net pot fits in here and then I have another cord. This is gonna be the up pot for this guy right here. Let's do all of the chunky pond guys first. So this is my chunky pond mix right here. This is the part that I always forget is to put the wicking cord in before you put in your substrate. Oh, the amount of times that I forgot to do this step, can't even count. Step one, done. I usually like to put Hmm, maybe like an inch or so of fresh pond on the bottom and then I'll go ahead and place the plant right in the middle. I kind of like to squish it down because I know anthurium like to grow up so I want the substrate to cover the stem of it. 
I could upsize it significantly. I don't know, something is just telling me that I don't want to be too bold. There's just been some weird leaves happening, some weird discoloration, and I don't want to chance it. There's some air gaps here, so what I just like to do is kind of like squish the size of the pot and what this does is all the pond will then go to these air gaps because you want the roots to be surrounded by the substrate you don't want any huge air gaps there because it'll just cause them to dry out and then you have dry rot happening that looks a lot better top it up with pond Here's the little tag for it. It's gonna stick it on the side again. This boy is repotted. That'll do. Next guy on the roster is this pathetic, droopy looking thing. This is the first seedling that I've gotten in all my anthurium seedlings that just, I don't know if it has the will to live. The leaves just look so pitiful. Fingers crossed for this one. I put maybe a little less than half. And why I do this is because, ooh, sorry dude, because I don't want the roots to be so close to the water. That'll just increase its chances of rotting. Stick in the tag. And there you are, all nice and repotted, no air gaps. Fingers crossed. Tree fern pumice mix, last container for the Michelle here. So these are holes that I self-drilled and one of, one of the worst aspects of this plant hobby is to squeeze string in through my janky holes. That's what she said. Do my best, I just shoved in and that's also what she said. Uh, he said, that'll do. I don't know why, but just how these roots are, it reminds me of that movie. Did it have Tom Cruise in it or? It could even be that alien in Stranger Things with the little legs. Does anyone else see that? Just me? Okay. Tree fern usually doesn't leave air gaps. So that concludes all the plants that need to be repotted today. Next step is to take these pond guys to the sink and just run straight water through it because the pond's dry and kind of dusty. So you want to clear out um, all the dust in there or as much of it as you can. Okay, I'm back. I flushed the pond, it's all hydrated, not nearly as dusty. So in here I have my nutrient water for all my hydro plants. So I'm just going to water it through. And for my repotted plants, I make sure to add great white into my first water because I want some good bacteria to inoculate this substrate mix. You might feel compelled to just soak it because look at all of the tree fern that's not dampened by the water. It actually will distribute the water over the course of like the next couple of hours so you don't have to drench this at all. I'm leaving a little bit of that nutrient water at the bottom of each one. The last thing to do is to put them in their homes. Ooh, really quick, while I'm filming over here, check out my, I think this is called a Boston Tiger Fern. It's basically like, no, it's a Boston Fern, but it's variegated. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That is amazing. I'll insert a picture of what she looked like before, but she looked pitiful. Never really watered her appropriately, but then I got her into pond, and look at her now. Ferns and pond. Give it a go. So this is where the Michelle is gonna live. If you see weird black lines going through the um, screen, I'm sorry. I think it's because of the grow lights, to, to be honest. This is where this guy's gonna live, right next to the seedlings under this grow light. The silver blush hybrid with the red crystal is right over here. Moving on to the last guy. This is where the forgetty eye hybrid goes. It, it just looks so pitiful. Look at how droopy the leaves are. This is the one that I'm really worried about. I really hope it'll appreciate this repot, but I don't know. Time will tell. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Next video, I know I said this the last time, will for sure be the Cartel Dawn surprise box unboxing. Unfortunately, because of the severe cold weather that we have all been experiencing, the flight got delayed. So even though the plants are in California, they have not been shipped out. But I anticipate receiving it on Wednesday. I'll make sure to film an unboxing then. And hopefully the plants are okay. Anyway, I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. It'll make my day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!